Hello and welcome to the second part of a two-part introductory tutorial for fluency. We're in this tutorial, we're actually going to pick up right where we left off on the previous tutorial. Now we're going to enable some of the additional resources that fluency provides in order to help translators translate more quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and unhide all of our resources here from the view menu. So down across the bottom we now have translation memories, terminology, and some web resources. Now if you're unfamiliar with translation memories, one of the things that Fluency and other CAT tools do is that they'll save the source and target sentences as you translate them into a database on your computer. And this is done in order to provide a, an option to pull up old translations for new documents. So for example, if I translated something a couple months ago and I came across it again in my source text, then Fluency would quickly provide that translation down here below. And so we see here we have 100% match because I'd just done it previously and now it pulls up the translation. And we're going to go down here and demonstrate how useful this can actually be. So here we have the sentence, this is the first bullet, followed by something that is, is very similar but we have not translated yet. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the next sentence. And you'll see here that Fluency has found a partial or an 80% match. And so it's comparing the text, this is the second bullet, to the one we just did, this is the first bullet. And it sees that there's an 80% match, 80% of the words are matching. And now it's provided us with that target translation. Now if we wanted to as a translator, I could now use this translation and then just manipulate it to fit the new context. So I can do this by double clicking here and then I can go in here and make changes as needed. Now my Spanish isn't too good and I'm sure that's incorrect but you get the general idea you can use uh, of how to use translation memories to quickly accelerate your translation process. Okay, next thing we want to demonstrate is terminology. Now fluency comes with built-in terminology so that as you're translating, if you come across a word or phrase that you're unfamiliar with, every word or, fr or phrase in the current sentence that's highlighted will be displayed down here and just to the right will be provided a quick uh, glossary or definition for that word. So case in point, we have uh, one possible translation here. Now, just like a dictionary, sometimes when you go and look up a word in your dictionary, uh, the first translation is not always the best one. So in Fluency, we provide additional translation possibilities here to the right. We also provide a machine translation from Microsoft here that you may use as well. Now, if you find a better definition than what Fluency has provided, you can always edit those. And so what we're going to do here is demonstrate that. I'm going to highlight this and do control C or copy and now I'm going to click here and then right click and do edit terminology and now I could put in a better or different definition if I want to I can put in additional translations here similar to this process I can also put in notes for example use this only in Argentinian Spanish versus Mexican Spanish I could put in parts of speech Anything that you want here is optional. It's only for uh, to aid you in the translation process. So if you find it helpful, you can put that information in. If you don't find that you need it, uh, go ahead and, and uh, skip that part and just hit OK. And now you notice this is in blue, and this indicates that it is one of the terms that I have added, as opposed to the ones that are built into Fluency and you'll see that everything that you add to Fluency would then supersede what's built in already. And so if I had notes here, those would show up here, or alternate translations, those would show up here as well. So that's terminology, and you can also access terminology via the terminology menu, and manage terminology, and in here you'll see the one that we just added, and if we want to, we can then go in here and make changes. We have additional fields here that we can enable if we want, like notes. We can indicate the source, where we found it, what website or uh, what reference material we used. And then when we're done, we can do save and quit. And now you'll notice here that the changes have been made 
down here in terminology. In translation, memories functions much the same. If I go here, I can also do manage TMs. And we see all the translations that I've now provided in this particular example, both the source and the target. One of the things you'll notice here is that fluency actually has switched the Spanish and the English. I started with English and, and went into Spanish. Fluency stores all the English to Spanish translations and all the Spanish to English translations in the same database. And what this enables a translator to do is they can translate uh, a great deal of work from English to Spanish one day, and the next day if they switch to Spanish to English, the translation memory system will switch into the reverse mode, meaning that uh, either direction that you do your translations, Fluency will try and provide resources to help you with that. So we'll go ahead and do Quit Without Saving here. And then last but not least, we do have some other resources here, including a concordance search. And concordance enables you to search any of the translations you've done in the past. So for example, if you did a translation six months ago and you'd like to see how you did that, just click on one of the words of interest and Fluency will research that for you and pull up examples of how you did that any time in the past. In addition, we also have Google here, so if we need to look up a word or phrase in Google, you'll notice it's already copied and pasted that word in there, so if I just click on a word like second, it will go ahead and look that up for me. In addition, I can also highlight phrases up here, so we can highlight systemic antibiotics. and it'll look that phrase up for me automatically. Here to the right we have additional websites. These are customizable by you, the translator, so you can have it take you to whatever website you prefer. Here we've thrown in RAE, and these are the ones that are default in Fluency. So to change those, we go to Tools and Preferences, Website Settings, and here we put in whatever website we want Fluency to take us to and then we put the name that's going to show up here in the tab. So if I wanted to go to MSN, and then we do apply. Give it a second to refresh that, and now it takes us to MSN. So these are the basic resources that Fluency provides to help accelerate the translation process, and we'll be covering these more in depth and further or additional uh, tutorials. So stay tuned and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to contact us uh, support at westernstandard.com you can also send us a support email through the help menu here. Just provide your email address and your question and we'll get back to you. Thank you.